Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox uh, for the first time ever says, Todd, I have to back Dolly. My dad would rent a room at the Best Western at North Road in Lougheed to watch the game because the Western final would be sold out. There would be a local blackout, and the hotel had satellite. Boom! Goes the dynamite. Apology any minute. See, a lot of people are, you know what, Donnie, a lot of people are coming to my aid. You okay. know? Let's get Craig in here. Okay. Anyways. I know you want to read some more. That back we'll, we'll do it later because people I'm are I'm surprised how many people are backing up, so maybe I stand corrected. Yes. All right. It is Tuesday, and all of our guests today are sponsored by Skipper Auto, supporting Canadian fishing families through a revolutionary seafood buying experience. Check them out online at skipperauto.com as we bring in TSN Scouting Director Craig Button. How are you, sir? I'm good, Donnie. How are you? Very, very well. Uh, the conversation that we were just uh, talking about, uh, centered around something we had, we just had Ryan Walter on uh, for various reasons, but but Craig he said that when he was president of the American Hockey League's Abbotsford Heat, the uh, pres uh, the uh, Calgary Flames farm team, their research told them that the number one competition for them wasn't movie theaters or other sports teams. It was mom and dad staying at home, opening a bottle of wine, and going into the man cave and watching Netflix. Would you agree that's a problem for pro sports teams these days? I think it is because when you see the proliferation of video and you see the proliferation of of uh, TV and, and how media is, is delivered, you know, do you want to go and travel down to a sporting event or a concert or a movie theater, mm -hmm. right? When you gotta you gotta drive there, you gotta pay for parking and everything. Not not, not to mention tickets and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of people that aren't prepared to do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how many people have that conversation, but it, I think it's definitely true, and we'll uh, delve into it uh, in later shows. Hey, Craig, last night, Habs stay alive in overtime. I believe you tweeted out uh, the fact that you were a fan of what Dominic Ducharme did with his lineup last night. Well, I mean, he had to do something, right? I mean, you're down three games to nothing, and, y you know, two of the three games you're really, you, you know, dominated. So, you know, you're playing for your playoff lives, and if you don't do something, you know, you're, you know, you're really you're, – by not doing something, you're doing something which is really surrendering. And I think Donald Ducharme said that wasn't an acceptable thing to do. And, you know, we can, we can debate what, what, about the moves, but he had to make moves. He had mm -hmm. to do something to change things up. And as it turned out, uh, you know, they ended up winning. And I would have felt the same way if they didn't win. They had to do something. Um, Craig, uh, last night, the thing that I noticed, a lot of people uh, noticed, was that uh, the Habs were extremely physical. They hit the Tampa Bay Lightning. I don't know how many hits Braden Point absorbed, uh, but it was a lot. Did that make a big difference? Two days rest, getting getting two more defensemen in there that can play rather than the guys that were uh, you know not able to take the burden off of those top four defensemen. So, you know, you, you're rested at this point in the year with an extra day. That helps. The other two guys, uh, you know, Romanoff and Kulak getting in there and giving them good minutes allows you to do that. Those four defensemen are big and strong and physical, and they were that. And so, you know, playing with the, uh, with the urgency, the competitive urgency that they played with last night, it was necessary. And, you know, they were ready. And I, I think, like, throw caution to the wind at that point. This isn't about, oh, let's manage the game. Let's make sure we don't do anything that, uh, uh, you know, is going to harm us. You have to go after it. And they did. Hey, Craig, uh, let's switch to the NHL draft. It's, it's not too far away. The Canucks uh, interviewed Kent Johnson, the Port Moody kid, uh, last week. He's had multiple discussions with everyone in the top ten. Craig, do you see Johnson for sure going in the top ten? No, I don't. Uh, I think there's probably 15 players that could go in the top ten. Obviously, we know that only ten are going to go there. But I think Kent Johnson, like a lot of players, you know, is certainly uh, going to be a candidate to go in the top 10 and, you know, should be. But, you know, it's not like there's this huge separation, uh, you know, after Power and uh, Eklund and, uh, and Beneers. You know, the next uh, 10 guys, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty close. And it all comes down to, 
where you're at with respect to what, what you like, what position you like, what type of player you like. You know, I go back to a draft a couple of years ago uh, in 18, and Noah Dotson went 12. I know, I, know it's, I know teams that were considering him in the top five or six. If, if a player wasn't there, they would have taken him there. So that's the kind of the spread that you get with, the, with this type of a draft with players that are so, you know, closely uh, uh, projected with respect to their talents and skills. Hey, Craig, a lot of rumors in Vancouver that Nate Schmidt wants out. He didn't have a lot of fun in his first year in Vancouver. As a general manager, how did you uh, handle situations where players <clears throat> were not happy or possibly asked for a trade? Well, I think, first of all, you have to understand why they weren't happy. I mean, let's keep in mind that the last two years uh, brought a lot of different challenges for everybody, not just the hockey players. And so, you know, you know the, the experience of playing – uh, in a new city uh, with new teammates, it's not the same as it was in different years. So if I'm if I'm Jim Benning, I'm going to go sit with Nate and try to understand what is the source of uh, of his unhappiness. And, and, and by understanding that and understanding, okay, what can we do better? What does he need to understand better? You know, then you can move forward. But I always go with the idea of of trying to resolve these issues and. The, the end result might be that, yeah, that, that the player has to move along, but that's not where I start. I would say that would be my end point, not my beginning point. Okay, uh, Craig, um, as you're probably aware, uh, Todd Harvey has been promoted to director of amateur scouting uh, by the Vancouver Canucks. Have I got this right? Is there a real, and, and I believe you, you said it before, you've told the story before in our old show, is there an outstanding Craig Button, Todd Harvey story that you'd like to share with people? <laughs> there sure is. Uh, in his draft year, mm. uh, 1993, uh, they, they had a little kind of, uh, I call it a hobby farm, mm -hmm. just outside of Cambridge, Ontario. So I went there to meet with, the, we always go and meet with the families for a day, day and a half. And so we went there to, to, to meet with the Harveys. And uh, Todd's, uh, you know, they had some uh, cows there, all the the one, the, the, it was, uh, it was some birthing going on. So I was there, and we're sitting down having lunch. And Denise Todd's mother uh, is uh, hearing the groans, and she goes out there, and then she calls Todd to come out. And so then, I, I, eventually, I had to go out into the pen, and uh, remember, I had white shorts on, and I think I had some sandals, and I don't even know what shirt, a, a, a golf shirt or a polo, and uh, so. Denise is making sure that she's studying the, the mother to make sure she can give birth. And then Todd's holding on. And he <laughs> says, he goes, hey, listen, you got to come here and help me. And you got to help the calf be born and pull out the legs. So we grab on. And, you know, Denise is guiding us. And boom, out comes the calf. I fall back into a big pile of uh, mud and dirt and everything. And, you know, I, I always say not only did we uh, birth the first draft pick in Dallas Stars history with Todd Harvey eventually, I also helped birth the calf. That was 93, and he was drafted ninth overall by <laughs> then your uh, Dallas Stars. Hey, Craig, yeah. <laughs> Craig uh, we're out of time here. Th we're behind on our clock today. I apologize for this, but thanks so much for the story, and uh, we'll yeah. talk to you next week. Yeah, thanks. You bet.